Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, to everyone here and also watching uh, on stage. My, my name is Tayo Vyosu. Um, I just want to give a, a few words really around making the case for what I call a hybrid solution for the future of commerce in Africa. So if my presentation can be queued up, I'll just get right, right into it. Fantastic. All right, so to start off, I just really want to talk about, first of all, the African consumer, right? The African consumer is complex. So I want you to meet 32-year-old Ada, right? Um, Ada is the first person in her family to have a smartphone, but she does not keep her data on regularly because of the high cost of data, right? She does have a bank account, and she uses her mobile banking app. However, when she goes out to stores, to restaurants, to supermarkets, she still pays in cash because she thinks cash is reliable. We were talking earlier about in-person payments and the innovations around in-person payments. She shops on, she looks online, she shops online, right? But she still asks to see the products delivered to her before she makes her payment. This is the African consumer from the middle class and up in Africa today. The African merchant is also complex. I want you to meet what we call the aspiring Aisha. She owns a supermarket with eight employees. She does not have a point of sale device, so she cannot accept cards, but people are constantly asking her for cards. All Aisha wants is to be able to digitize her business, to be able to manage her business in a more efficient way. These are the needs and the desires of the African merchant. The future of commerce is going to drive and solve these solutions um, for, for the merchant. But these reasons are why it is actually difficult for digital-only models to scale across Africa. And that is why we need a hybrid of both online and offline to win and to address the SMEs and the consumers. Smartphone penetration is, is growing, but it's not quite there. In Nigeria, where we are today, as an example, or where I am today, as an example, smartphone penetration is between 12 to 20 percent. That is where the United States was in 2010, right? So it's still a long way to go in terms of smartphone penetration. We need to make sure that we have what we call um, technology that is ready, appropriate technology for the market. Um, I remember in 2009 when, when we launched Paga, we had the technology for tap and pay. Earlier today in our conversation, Goke asked the question, when would that be a thing in Nigeria? Well, in 2010, we had the technology for this, and it was, you know, and it was really too early right, for it. The other reason why it's difficult for digital-only models is that SMEs are currently primarily offline. In Africa today, less than 1% of all retail is done online. In the United States, it's actually... 14%. Most people, when I ask them that question, think it's about 40 to 50%. The United States was less than 1% before 2010. So just to give you a sense of how far behind we are. But that is the opportunity, right? Today, the SMEs are not using any form of technology to drive their business, and that is a big challenge. One interesting um, case study on this is I recently was speaking to the CEO of one of the largest travel companies in Africa. 54% of their sales end with an in-person experience, with an in-person payment. The pure, true online payments make less than 20% of their international travel sales, right? Um, and, but the market is moving towards digital. This is clear. We've heard a lot about that today. A lot of companies like Paga, Paystack are building the infrastructure needed for that. Um, and ultimately, the move to digital will be driven by consumer comfort, with purchasing items without seeing them, will be driven by higher access to data, cheaper data, smartphones, and improved logistics. Tell me what I talked earlier about the need to solve that logistics side of things. That is going to drive, drive it. However, we also believe financial services is going to be a big driver, and it is being democratized to enable digital access and relationships that benefit both sellers and buyers. Right? We're seeing across Africa alternative payment methods whether it's M-Pesa in East Africa, Paga here in Nigeria, Wave in Senegal, Fari in Egypt, 
these alternative payment methods are driving digital transformation. We're also seeing the rise of crypto. We just heard from Ray at Paxful, where we, there's Bycoins, Patricia, Yellow Card, all driving innovation on the crypto side of things. And today, crypto is primarily being held as an asset, but I see a future where crypto will be used to make payments. The digital Naira, the e-Naira will be used to make payments. Bitcoin will be used to make payments across the continent. And open finance. This is the idea that your data belongs to you. And so you can take that and drive your transactions. You can ask any other application to take your data from any financial institution. And people like Okra are driving this innovation across the continent. And then, of course, lending. Whether that's for SMEs or for individuals, this is really important. There's a variety of companies focusing on making financial services available and lending available to SMEs and to individuals. At Paga, what we have done is to take a hybrid approach, digital and physical, to addressing the needs of consumers in Africa. Consumers can use the Paga platform to make payments, whether it's through agents or directly on their phone as well. Right? And we now serve over 18 and a half million users. And then what we have now done is we've opened up all our infrastructure to the third party ecosystem, to developers, to leverage what we are doing um, and to innovate on top of it so that the hard work we've done can be leveraged by others. And we're doing that also with our SME platform, Doroki, leveraging those open APIs that Paga created um, to offer a solution to merchants that has an MPOS for card, card payments and then an app to collect alternative payments, bank transfers, USSD, et cetera, and over time, bring them onto an online storefront as well. We currently have 5,000 merchants on this platform. So we're making a lot of progress around this, and we're opening up and innovating for other people. But in summary, really what I want to leave you with is that the African consumer and the African SME are complex, and they're not yet fully digital. So to solve the problems, to help them innovate and for the future of commerce, we have to think about that bridge between in-person and purely digital, right? Um, financial services will democratize the ability to speed this up, and I see cryptocurrency playing a very strong role. I'm super excited about the future of commerce in Africa. I think this is the next frontier for the world, um, and I'm excited about how the infrastructure companies like ours are building will enable that future. Thank you very much.